Hello everyone and welcome to World Economics, a new episode of the video blog that we make with the uh, uh, Rafael del Pino Foundation. Thank you very much for the support and for all the questions that we have received. Many of the questions are about are we entering into a crisis? Are we entering into something similar to the 2008 crisis? And what is the difference between what we hear? We hear uh, words like slowdown, recession, crisis. What is the difference? No? Slowdown is uh, virtually not a problem, never been a problem. It's simply that the economy is growing at a slower pace than it used to grow. It is still in expansion, but it, uh, it is not growing either as much as we expected or uh, as much as the government or the central planners would like, uh, like the economy to grow. However, uh, a slowdown is important because, for example, if we look at the slowdown of many of the economies that we see uh, right now, what we see is a divergence between services and manufacturing. We have a very clear manufacturing recession, manufacturing contraction. The manufacturing sector is clearly uh, uh, reducing its output. It's also reducing expenditure, reducing investment and reducing employment. However, most of the economies remain uh, with a certain level of, of, of decent growth because the services sector is actually very robust. And if you look at the main economies in the world, uh, the services sector is the biggest part of the economy. In the case of the United States, it's about 70%. No? So if we look at uh, the services sector, it is still in expansion. The consumer is still spending. There is still uh, quite a strong activity there. And uh, that is key keeping the economy growing, but growing at a slower pace. However, there is a translation and there is a, a, of the weakness of the manufacturing sector into the service sector. And it's becoming pretty evident in the United States and in the Eurozone. Hmm? So how do we go from a slowdown to a recession? Usually, First, obviously, the economic cycle turns and economic cycles are not uh, expansive all of the time. They can have an expansionary cycle for a period, but you cannot expect it to, it to be in expansion forever. Then sometimes a recession is not negative. It's simply just that the economy that you're seeing, that GDP is, is, is not growing, is actually contracting. But there can be employment growth and there can be productivity growth still. No? It's a good opportunity, usually a recession, to clean up the excesses of the past. Usually the, a recession also means an opportunity for uh, uh, all those sectors that have got to, to, into too much debt, that have increased leverage, that have increased aggressively working capital to uh, clean up. No? And there's creative destruction that helps to uh, further increase growth afterwards. And, and this is what we have seen in numerous occasions. So how do we go from a, from a slowdown to a recession and from a recession to a crisis? Uh, from a slowdown to a recession tends to happen by constantly ignoring the factors that are telling us that the cycle is turning. Is, is we, despite the signals, the economic agents as a whole decide collectively to ignore those uh, factors and to continue to pursue a level of leverage into the cycle that is uh, extraordinary or not warranted. Uh, things that help in this, in this perception of uh, no risk and taking uh, too much uh, exposure to a cycle that is turning. One, when interest rates are too low. Two, when liquidity is too high. So there are, there are almost subsidies to taking too much risk uh, that can lead us to recession when the, economy, when the economy is not willing to acknowledge the realities of some of the, of the parts of the economy that are in slowdown. And that can happen. And it's pretty evident, for example, in the Eurozone. Usually, uh, you go from a slowdown to a recession by implementing aggressive demand side policies in which governments expect to change, to change the course of the economic cycle. 
they expect they they think that they have more and better information than uh, the uh, private sector about what is needed in the economy and therefore they generate further slack no they create white elephants they they invest in in higher uh, in capital intensive projects with very low economic return generate higher debt lower productivity etc and that's how we move into a crisis Usually, you move into a crisis by taking excessive risk in areas in which you believe that there is no risk. Usually, those, the, the, the concept of white elephants, massive uh, infrastructure or construction projects that have very little uh, actual economic return or no economic return, actually make the economy less dynamic. No? We're hearing, for example, right now that Germany should spend a lot more in order to save the Eurozone. There is absolutely no evidence that Germany is spending too little or is, or is spending less than what it needs. Actually, there is a lot of evidence that Germany actually was, is partially to blame of taking too much of an exposure to a cycle that was already turning because China was already uh, in, a, in a significant slowdown a few uh, years back. So, we go into a crisis by aggressively trying to prevent a slowdown that should not be a concern for governments. When the slowdown is because the, there is a change in the economic growth pattern, when there is a change in consumer pattern, when there is a change also in technology, when there is a change also in the commodity cycle, we should not be constantly trying to prevent cycles from happening. We should actually embrace those cycles and allow the high productivity sectors to grow while uh, cleaning up uh, some of the excesses of the past. If we, uh, if we look at the economy globally right now, are we in a risk of recession? Yes there is a risk of recession, fundamentally, because via monetary policy and via fiscal stimulus, what we are trying to do is very, very stubbornly try to prevent any uh, change in the economic cycle. And we, by doing that, what, en what ends up happening is that the governments and central planners, what they're doing is perpetuating the, the problem, perpetuating overcapacity and higher debt. Uh, uh, is there a risk of a crisis? Much less so than what we had in 2008. Much less so. Why? Because the uh, crisis happen when we take massive levels of risk in something that we believe has no risk. Uh, very evident in housing. We, uh, many of economic agents, borrowers, lenders, uh, economic agents, took uh, aggressive levels of risk in housing precisely because uh, they believed that there was no risk of that asset, of those assets falling, and that there was very little risk in housing, in uh, non-performing loans, etc. Uh, in the case of uh, the current situation, where do we have the excess level of risk embedded? In sovereign bonds fundamentally in fixed income. So what we see is that the, the, the change of pattern is, is that to enter into 2008 style crisis is very difficult because the 2008 crisis was fundamentally, yes, a shock in, uh, in supply. You had an immediate cut in, uh, in credit, you had a media cut in liquidity when something that everybody or many people believed had no risk suddenly was perceived as extremely risky and that permeated to the rest of the economy. If we look at what is happening today, it's the opposite. What we have right now is excess of demand. Huh? What, so the, if we take demand side policies, what we're going to create is even further excess of demand. We have too much overcapacity, too much debt, too much government spending, too many stimulus mm, chained one after the other. And all those factors are likely to generate not a crisis like the one of 2008, but more likely a prolonged period of stagnation. When we look at, um, uh, therefore, the process of going from slowdown to recession to, uh, to crisis, inevitably, the process always goes uh, jointly with an acceleration of measures taken by governments to prevent what 
initially was not needed to prevent, which was simply a small uh, and, and perfectly acceptable change of economic cycle. Thank you very much. Thank <music> you.